When you get an invitation to shoot on the largest warship in the world, you take it. Today is Sam the Cooking Guy, out at sea with the USS Ronald Reagan. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy. This show is about food that's big in taste and small in effort. Done. Totally easy stuff anyone can make. Oh god. And everything comes from the supermarket. Here's what you do. Take all those other cooking shows like this. Get rid of them. You know what? You don't need them anymore. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. Okay, so welcome back. And yes, I am on the deck of the USS Ronald Reagan, and this is about as cool as it absolutely gets. Uh, but maybe we should start with a little, you know, USS Ronald Reagan 101. Of course, named after the 40th uh, President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. I called him Ronnie, who was Commander in Chief from 1981 to 1989. Not only the newest, but also the largest nuclear powered aircraft carrier in the world and it arrived at its home port of San Diego, California in July of 2004. It can hold almost 6,000 Navy personnel, carries enough food and supplies to operate for 90 days, and serves almost 18,000 meals daily. Did I mention that it can operate for more than 20 years without refueling? 20 years without refueling. The tower reaches 20 stories above the waterline, and the ship, 1,092 feet long, nearly as long as the Empire State Building is tall. and the flight deck covers four and a half acres. That's enough for three football fields and room for a basketball court. Hey, and it can also carry over 80 combat aircraft. From F-18 Hornets, to Super Hornets, Prowlers, the funky thing on the nose, Hawkeyes with the big radar deal on top. Greyhounds, the thing we flew in on, and you'll see more of that in a bit. And Nighthawk helicopters. And we were standing right there on the flight deck. I mean, right there. Talk about adrenaline. Okay, so how do these aircraft take off and land, you ask? Well, there's three arresting cables that can stop a 28-ton aircraft going 150 miles an hour in less than 400 feet. And when taking off, an aircraft gets catapulted so it goes from zero to 150 miles an hour in two seconds. When we come back, you'll see how we landed on the ship. Here we go, here we go, here we go! <laughs> okay, this is so cool. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. The first item is your flotation device. In the event of a water landing, your seat cushion cannot be used as a flotation device. And after a safety briefing, you put on your gear. A vest for the water landing thing. That's not mine. This is, this is not mine. Helmet with ear deals.
and goggles. And you're ready. And there she is, our ride out to the Reagan, the car. Except now I'm starting to get a little anxious. Which really isn't helped by the fact that on board they tell you that right about before the plane is gonna land, they'll start screaming and waving their arms so you know to hang on really tight. Did I mention sometimes I get a little motion sick? Sometimes I do. There you are, and it's better than any roller coaster you've ever had at any theme park. The back opens up, and you're taxiing on the flight deck of the Reagan, Navy guys with their outfits all over the place. You can't believe it. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. My first stop on the Reagan, the bake shop. Oh, how cute. And even though there's a million things to do on board an aircraft carrier, most of our time was spent with the CSs, the culinary specialists. I mean, hey, it is a cooking show. I don't think there's bacon there. I think it's all icing. Can we try your cake? Yeah. I started trying here. And all I got was icing. I know there's real cake in there. It's actually a strawberry cake with strawberry. Oh, it is? Yes. You want to cut it with? If we cut it together, it's almost like we've just gotten married. Yeah. And my wife doesn't like that, so. Okay. Could it get noisier in here? Do you guys have more fans? That, so I can actually sort of still hear myself. I'm going to try and do this, so. Watch. Ready? Jennifer's cake, come on. Oh, look at you, have you tried it? Can I have another fork, please? Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll share. I'm good, don't. But you need the middle layer, don't you, too? And some icing? I don't think I've ever had a cake made for me before. It's really good. I like the strawberry a lot. Thank you. Oh, God. I have to try the girl's cake. It would be rude 
not to have cake. Somebody makes you a cake with your name on it and roses. I mean, really? And oh, by the way, Kelly, if you're watching, come on, I have to. <laughs> it's a swan. It's a perfect little swan. That you, you hate to have to do this, but when somebody makes you something this pretty, wow. I love the big shop. But it's not enough just to eat. The culinary specialists wanted to show us some of their fine work. First, CF Porter shows us how to make pandy cocoa. So think cinnamon roll, but made even simpler by using pizza dough with tons of brown sugar and coconut. We try to get all the good stuff inside, so it kind of looks like a cinnamon roll when you cut into it. Exactly. The swirly part. You just take it, like, like kind of like you're sewing. You push in, and you just tuck it over. That's a good move. You roll it over this way. This one's kind of thin. You take it now you brush it? Yeah, you want to brush it? I do. Go ahead. How much? Not too much. Yeah, just kind of enough for the powdered sugar to stick. Do you do the sides? Yep. And then you take a handful. You want to do that? Take yeah. a handful and just sprinkle it on top. OK. And then you're going to take your raisins, and you're just going to pile them on top. I'm a Navy baker. I'm a Navy baker. Yeah, I got it down. I can be making this at home. So here's the lesson for home. You could totally just take some raw pizza dough and make this, because that's basically what it is. Yeah. It's the same dough you use for, like that spinach pizza that I had when we came on yeah. board, yeah? Spinach pizza. Which was really good, by the way. Thank you. We made You're that welcome. today. Okay, may I? Yeah. So when is this served? Um, it's usually they like to serve it during uh, lunch and dinner. Sometimes we put raisins in it, like this one I'm putting raisins in it, that's when I, I might not put, like all these don't have raisins in them. It's really, really good. I think I like it without raisins. Without raisins? Yeah, I think it's better. But that's just me. Look what I learned on board the Reagan. You're awesome, thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate that. And this is the biggest paper bag I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> we have to sort our trash. I want paper bags like this for home. Next, CS3 Flores gives us his version of a spinach pizza, a big one. Hey, it's a simple pizza. Dough, Alfredo sauce, spinach, mushrooms, cheese on top, you know. Might be a little warm. I can handle warm. <laughs> oh, it's not that bad. Oh. What do you think? Not the best, but it's one of the one no, of the favorites. No, it's really good. Here. It's really good. <laughs> I like it. I'll totally do this. I'm not making my own pizza dough, though. <laughs> and finally, CS2 Madeira teaches the art of making cream puffs. That's the steam heating up the that giant cauldron thing. The carrier is nuclear power. It's not, there's no like gas heating these things. It's steam being created through the nuclear plant. I don't know how that works. I just know that that I said something about burners in the one of the other kitchens. They know we don't have any burners. No pots or pans. They have the big flat top griddle things, deep fryers, and these. They cook everything on those. It, it's pretty cool. Like I know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm doing. You want to take this one? No, I want my own. <laughs> and I couldn't help but think, they're feeding 5,000 people and they're still going to the trouble to make their own cream puffs. Fantastic. Too big. It's too big? No, it's good.
<laughs> oh, and look it. So it's coming out of the top. I don't like this. We bake these off at 400 degrees. Yes. And we, uh, for 10 minutes, and then we drop it down to 325. I leave it there for 40 minutes. This is a uh, product. And if you cut these, cut these. Cut these in half. You fill them. These are mousse, chocolate mousse, vanilla mousse, strawberry mousse. Good coffee. Four. Looks like it should have more topping in there. Yes? Who can eat all that? You do nice work. Thanks, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Don't go away. When we come back, it's me in the storerooms, the refrigerators, and the freezers of the USS Ronald Reagan. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. And being inquisitive, of course, I wanted to know where they keep enough food to serve more than 18,000 meals a day. So storeroom supervisor Matthew Seitman showed me around. Right now we have $1.2 million worth of inventory right now current on hand. When we load up for our deployments, we'll be at three, three and a half million dollars. And all our storerooms will be up to the ceiling or up to the top of these bins to the doors and we'll be crawling out, pushing up our breakouts. Just on, a, on like a regular day, you know, like uh, what quantities of stuff you go through? We go through mass amount of quantities. Um, roughly for all our galleys, all some galleys on board, yeah. we go through about maybe 150 to 200 pounds of bacon. Roughly about uh, six to 700 uh, portions of pancakes, waffles, and French toast sticks. Tell me about chicken. Chicken, um, if you've uh, been to our Ford galley, uh, yeah. you see how much chicken we go through on our chicken bar. Roughly, we go through about maybe 2,000 to 2,500 pounds of chicken oh, a day? On, a, on a daily basis. Lord, that's a lot. With all the different types of chicken combined. Jeez. So, eggs. Tell me eggs. Eggs, wow. 500 pounds of eggs just for frozen eggs. For fresh eggs, we're talking about maybe, I have to say, 250 dozen, 300 dozen. Like mostly for breakfast? Mostly just, that's just breakfast alone. And how are eggs being served for breakfast? Uh, we have different types of eggs. Uh, with the Navy, uh, we have pre-made items. That way, for manning purposes, we always can put out a meal if we have to. We uh, do almost eggs to order on Sundays. Do you? For 5,000 people, eggs to order. Come on. Nah, I wouldn't joke around like that. It's, it, everything that we do, like I said, it's for our crew. We've got to keep their morale up. So it's our job to provide that meal for them. At like all times. The, you guys are huge in the morale business, yeah? Always. Yeah. The, all food service is always, it, all of the Navy has been a part of the morale of the whole crew. All That's the morale, awesome. it's basic human needs. Food. What makes people happy? Food. We get it for family, it's food. That's so right. we try to bring the, that atmosphere back when we're away from our friends and families. That's really awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Oh, not a problem. Yes. Okay. Okay, of course you got your dry storage, we've seen that, but now you got the refrigerated storage. This here is what you would call your basic huge ass refrigerator. And it carries a whole bunch of the following items, cream cheese, butter, shredded Monterey Jack, flour tortillas, sliced Swiss pita bread, cottage cheese sour cream, horseradish, baker's dry yeast, I don't know why. Ugh, this is awful, it's awful. Look, cream cheese here. 2% milk, milk, it's a ham thing. Got your yogurt over here, lots of Parmesan cheese, yogurts, eggs, lots of eggs. Lots of eggs. I mean, it's 5,000 people, you gotta have, there's other cold rooms. This is not the only cold room. Oh. <laughs> I love these things. I love these things. Watch, watch how these work. Hold on, back up, Shannon. Johnson, here comes the yogurt. <laughs> Johnson, more yogurt, the captain wants it. <laughs> All right, I gotta put this stuff back. We're gonna go look at the freezer. All right, so the fridge was cold enough. Oh, it's a good jacket. 
And now we are in the freezer and everything. Whoa. We gotta get that fixed. There's a, uh... oh, it's cold. It's like negative four or five, something like that. It's a bad place to have to spend time. But you got everything you want, pastrami. I love pastrami. You got your, they got it, really. They got bratwurst over here. They got bacon, pre-cooked bacon. Oh yeah, are you kidding me? I'm a huge, you know. The Navy and me, we're like this when it comes to the, the bacon. What do we got? We got corned beef brisket. Corned beef brisket, the food of my people. I need some of this. I don't know what this is. Cooked ground beef. No, oh, it's really cold in this part. It's. Can you see that? Look at this. Frozen product, store at zero or below. No sh Sherlock. It is cold in here. Next time on part two of Sam the Cooking Guy on the USS Ronald Reagan. Hey, the other thing, in fact, standing up on the bridge right now with me is uh, kind of a, a local celebrity. Well, he is a local celebrity in San Diego, Sam the Cooking Guy. So for some reason, they're letting me go up and sit in the cockpit of an FA-18, fighter slash attack, Super Hornet. Apparently they've not seen what I can do with a knife and asparagus, but it seemed like a good idea to them, so I'm going in. It was almost a really bad thing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm here looking. Yeah, 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 you can take a look. All right, uh, so basically, uh, here, I tell you what, why don't you stand right here, grab onto the handrail. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy, and you might know me from my TV show, I hope. Anyway, now we have the Sam live cast. It's live, uncensored, and uncut. Oh, Plus, you, as the audience, can participate. And if you miss it, you can always download the podcast. And while there's always food, it's not always about food. That's how we do things here. We all got it. Got just all this anger. But it is always about having a great time. The Sam Livecast. <laughs> <laughs>
I mean, I'm trying to really struggle as it is, trying to keep up with them as, as I go along. Well, I hear you. Can I help? Are these guys done down here? He's ready? Would you just stack them all up and then put them in the tray? Oh. Like that? Yeah. Want more? Okay. All this will go into one. Oh, we will. And then we'll be gone in within at least five minutes. Okay, so here's the deal. It's now what, like quarter to seven? Oh, six, what, what military time, what is that? Quarter to seven, it's just zero seven. Like zero, zero, okay, seven. so zero seven hundred, right? Uh, tell me, you just got off work. Yes. What were you doing? Uh, we were standing watch, driving the ship. Driving the ship, driving the ship. Yes. You've been on board how long? For what, almost four months now? And you're driving the ship. I mean, somebody's telling you, turn this, do that, right? How amazing is that? That's really cool. It's a pretty cool thing. Up on the bridge, yeah? So you you went to work at like, what time? Uh, zero, 1.30 in the morning. One thirty in the morning, it's now seven. And now what do you do, sleep? No. No, no, no sleep yet. Gotta go back to work. Back to work, back to work. And after breakfast, everyone reports for daily muster. Essentially a uh, coming together of all the departments to figure out what's going on for the day, special job assignments, that kind of stuff. Next, everyone participates in what's called spirit. Think of it as like a, a one hour cleaning of the ship every morning. We uh, obviously have to spend time cleaning the ship. It's a big ship and uh, with almost 5,000 people. About an hour a day is, is what we dedicate to it. And, and this is just an example of one of our sailors' dedication. And, and Pest Thorne is, is without a doubt a, a, one of our superstars. And you can see uh, she just takes a lot of pride in the, in the space that she's responsible for. And finally, we're off to work. Well, them, not me. The ship really is like a city of 5,000 people, and they all have a job to do, and they do it. Okay, check this out, it's kind of cool. All Arabian chips are now 10 cents. Their, their last deployment in the Gulf, they picked up all kinds of Arabian lays. Chili, salt, aren't they all salt? Maybe. Tomato, ketchup, French cheese. Not regular cheese, French cheese. Okay, so here's the, yeah, check this. Um, this store and the other store, plus the vending machines on the ship, take in eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a day. Hello, that is not insignificant at all. And the really cool part is that the profits from the money made in the stores goes back into a fund that supports activities for the crew, advance parties, special celebrations. When we come back, inside the laundry on the USS Ronald Reagan. Okay, whose idea was this? This is Sam, the cooking guy. Welcome back. We're in the laundry of the Reagan. In it. Let's look around. All right, so what's the deal? What is this? What's this? This should be one of our VIP members. Brings down his laundry. We wash it, we dry it, we fold it. 
And what's the, how long is this guy on board for, this person? He's been here for quite a while. Yeah. We've got it down. We've Me and Taylor here, I worked here for so long. We pretty much know every VIP member that comes down. So this is all VIP stuff here? Absolutely. So if I had stuff, could I? Absolutely. I set it down? You want to fold it? Press, maybe? Iron? You do all that? Yes, we do. So uniform sheets, whatever, they all come. They just throw them in one of these things in their, in their area. And they bring it down to us, yep. put it in the washer, put it in the dryer. About six hours later, they're ready for pickup. And they'll come back down and get it. Absolutely. And you're not you're not ironing, are you ironing oh, uniforms? No, 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 no. They have to be VIP. Got it. So. Officers? Officers, enlisted, chiefs. And they're doing their own personal junk themselves. Absolutely, because we have, again, we have, we have. Well, do officers do their personal stuff? They can. They, they actually have a laundromat right here, but they can. There's a lot of officers that don't have time to do so you it. Guys do. So we offer that service. All right, here we go now. Here's a good question. Does the captain wear like special Ronald Reagan boxers? No, he just Mickey wears Mouse. Plain old boxer crazy brief. little cactus flowers on there. You can't tell him I told you, but he wears plain old box briefs. He does. Yes, he does. Just like every regular man. Does he prefer a color? Usually black. Captain. I won't tell him. Between us. Yeah, just you and me. All right. <laughs> and speaking of the captain, I was invited onto the bridge to meet him. He even let me sit in his chair, the captain's chair. So, uh, welcome on board. Thank you, Captain. Yeah, it's great to have you on board. To be honest with you, it really is. It's really cool. You're the captain of the uh, largest warship in the uh, naval fleet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a small feat. No. No. A knucklehead? Was that your word? Yeah, I'm a knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> Good get on. You want me to get that for you? I got the phone. Bridge. Bridge. It's actually Red Deck! Aircraft just launched, so we uh, closed the deck now, so no one else picks on it. See, we're assembling on the bow. Oh. What we, we actually have to do is, um, at night, we walk and we make sure that no one's left any tools or anything's fallen off an aircraft because we don't want to suck it into the jet. And hey, what's this called? A FOD walkdown. FOD stands for Foreign Object Damage. Yeah. And it's an acronym for FOD. So, you know, you find things like, you know, little sh metal shavings or something like that. Good evening, Ronald Reagan, Carrier Wing 14. This is the captain. Well, we just finished our uh, daytime flight ops. As you know, we're going to be flying into the night till about 22.30 or so. We've got a uh, long range strike. It looks like we're going to be launching uh, 16 aircraft on the first night go and uh, we'll be working those aircraft back uh, at 2100 and 2230. So I figure we'll keep the deck open until 2245 or so and then put them to bed. Hey, the other thing, in fact, standing up in the bridge right now with me is uh, kind of a, a local celebrity. Well, he is a local celebrity in San Diego, Sam the Cooking Guy. He's got, he's here with his team. He's been walking around the mess decks. In fact, I had uh, dinner with him earlier at the Chiefs Mess, and uh, he's on board checking out our galleys, checking out our processes. I think he's even uh, going elbow to elbow with some of our culinary specialists, showing him a thing or two. So I appreciate that. I don't know if you've ever seen a show, but I certainly have, and it's what, what I consider everything he cooks is for a guy like me, wants to throw something together that's really, really good, and quite frankly, you can wash it down with a can of beer. So uh, we had dinner earlier, yes, Captain. We did. The captain had to come up here to do his important stuff, and he says he was leaving the table. When you come up, bring some chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> we went to the galley, and somebody had eaten them. <laughs> so oh, we brought wow. this the, the pandy cocoa. I actually made this one oh, earlier. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, they taught me how to do it, and they're not chocolate chip cookies. No, oh, that's but, awesome. But uh, I'm not getting out of your chair, so. <laughs> You'll be doing flight ops tonight. Good. <laughs> go to bed early. <laughs> when we come back, me, 900 pounds of prime rib, and 800 pounds of lobster. Don't go away. This is Sam the Cooking Guy. Obviously, as we've seen, food is a huge part of ship life. And after a long day of work, everyone ends up at one of the seven mess halls for lunch and dinner. Seven. Yes, you heard me right. There are seven messes or dining rooms for us land lovers. The aft and forward cruise mess for enlisted sailors, wardroom one, two, and three for officers, chief petty officer's mess, the flag mess for the admiral and his staff, and the captain's galley. And yes, as you can imagine, 
it does take a lot of preparation to feed 5,000 people. And of course, I had to try some. I mean, hey, you guys got to eat. What? It's just a little pasta. It's just a little pasta. Get out of here. OK, so like two of my favorite things, tater tots. I mean, honestly, who doesn't love a tater tot? Just right up here. Go get as many as you want. And sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes, one of my favorite things. By the way, like nothing in it. You don't need anything in it. That's just extra empty bad calories. Just eat them like this. You hear that? Just eat them plain. They're not listening to me. They got other stuff to do. And of course, you got your basic salad bar. This one happens to have those crunchy rice noodle things. I'm a huge fan of those. Garbanzo is probably my favorite uh, legume thing, whatever they're called. The sliced peppers, radishes, bacon bits. I'm not a huge bacon bit fan. I do love the real bacon. But you know, it's easy and a lot of people like it. You know, you got like 5,000 people you're trying to serve, so. Really, a salad bar, you certainly can't go wrong with a salad bar. Uh, fried chicken. That's good fried chicken, too. Sorry. I don't want to get in their way. And some crew work late into the night, like the pilots coming in from night operations. OK, so let's say it's like 20 after 11, because it is 20 after 11, and you're a pilot. you are just come in from landing on the carrier, and you're hungry because you, your workday is not quite over yet. Where do you get food? Uh, you go to uh, ward room one, and you have midnight rations, called mid-rats for short, and you eat then you hang out with your pilot buddies looking cool in their stuff. And landing on the deck at night, that's crazy. But midnight rations all over the ship. Because people are coming off their ships and they gotta eat before they go to bed. It's just the way, I mean, working all 24 hours a day, people working. It's nuts. Food never stops, the work never stops, the people never stop. It's all amazing and so cool. I love this place. Food always, who doesn't like that? Finally, after a very long day, it's time for bed. And this is where the enlisted sailors sleep, or berth, as they call it. So there's quite a lot of space in here, actually. Lock box thing. I'd be fine with this much space. I think it's actually pretty good. So, me getting into bed would look like that. Oh, yeah. You got that. So, so now that you're here. Now that I'm here, that's okay. But that hurts. <laughs> Stink. And you got your privacy curtain here. It goes all the way. Hanson, what time do we have to be on deck for the uh, FOD thing? <laughs> we should probably leave it. Johnson! I like it. That's good. I get a good night's sleep here. I'll tell you, I probably get a better night's sleep here because we're further down than the last night where all the practice was going off above my head. Every time my eyes started to shut, a whole nother whack. I mean, they're good because they practice all the time. They gotta do it, but they have to do the catapult thing right above my head at like two in the morning.
This is Sam the Cooking Guy. Okay, so this is my second time now on a carrier, and I always come away with the same feelings. I'm blown away by the teamwork, the cooperation, and I know it sounds corny, but 4,500 people all working together, it doesn't happen all that easily. Everything on this ship all work for one simple, single cause, it seems. Everybody has a partner, and it doesn't matter what level, what rank, from the captain down to the newest recruit. This place is amazing. The people on board, the Reagan have absolutely opened the doors and the, their spirit and their heart to us. I mean, really, it's just kind of crazy the way we've, we're leaving this place. Um, I don't know. I'd love to come back here all the time if I could. I'll leave it at that. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy on board the USS Ronald Reagan. Time to go, and I love these guys. Turns out Michelle is a little woozy. Look, and Lieutenant Jenkins just gave her something, just in case. <laughs> Apparently, Lieutenant Jenkins thinks she's gonna get really sick, because look how many there are. <laughs> My OG in our <laughs> Shannon and I are, please don't take the pills, I think you'll be fine, because we all want to see her. Yeah, I'm rooming with her, so on, uh, I'm oh, yeah. take the pills. Sorry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just... We just, we just put Michelle in there. Oh, I didn't the know there was a door. The I wouldn't have left you in that long. <laughs> there we go. We're going up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cold in here. Look. That's cold, man. That is cold in there. Look at my glasses. Shit, look at my glasses. What happens when you come out of like zero degrees? Can you tell me we're going back up there now, aren't you? I can't see anything. <laughs> Wait, should we try that again? Take you to Boxer Reef Man, Sam. I'm a. Um, I have my. my You're a Boxer Man? My genius light bulb. <laughs> Boxers. Seen them all. I bet you have. What is, are the names on the butt pockets? What I like to, my reason, what I like to say is, if I see something kind of wrong, or if I you know, want to talk to the person, I can always. You just do that. Then we always have a name in the front, and we'll have a name in the back. Well. Yes. Uh, it worked. It worked. It worked. <laughs> Sir, I was just reading your ass. Sorry. I didn't say. It happens all the time. <laughs> Don't go away. When we come back, Brandy Porter from Dallas, Texas, is going to show us how to make a panna coco. Panna coco. Right here on the Reagan. Nice job. Except I'm from Houston. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Wait. Today, Sam the Cooking Guy on the USS Ronald Reagan. I can't see anything. Honestly. Really. <laughs> When you get, sorry, when you get an invitation to shoot on the world's largest warship, you go. Today, Sam the Cooking Guy on the USS Ronald Reagan. I can see. This is gonna have to be in your outtakes. See, it's, am I doing this right? Oh, this is bad, this is going bad. I'm doing this wrong. I know I'm hooked. <laughs> I think I'll go to uh, the mess hall now. So for some reason, they're letting me go up and sit in the cockpit of an FA-18, fighter slash attack, Super Hornet. Apparently they've not seen what I can do with a knife and asparagus, but it seemed like a good idea to them, so I'm going in.
Oh, it was almost a really bad thing. <laughs> Sorry. I'm here looking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can take a look. All right. Uh, so basically, uh, here, I tell you what, why don't you stand right here, grab onto the handrail. I'm Sam the Cooking Guy, and you might know me from my TV show. I hope. Anyway, now we have the Sam live cast. It's live, uncensored, and uncut. Oh, Plus, you as the audience can participate. And if you miss it, you can always download the podcast. And while there's always food, it's not always about food. That's how we do things here. We all got it. I got just all this anger. But it is always about having a great time. The Sam Livecast. <laughs> <laughs>